An anchor is a device, normally made of metal, used to connect a vessel to the bed of a body of water to prevent the craft from drifting due to wind or current. The word derives from Latin ancora, which itself comes from the Greek gamma kappa upsilon rho alpha. Anchors can either be temporary or permanent. Permanent anchors are used in the creation of a mooring, and are rarely moved. A specialist service is normally needed to move or maintain them. Vessels carry one or more temporary anchors, which may be of different designs and weights. A sea anchor is a drogue, not in contact with the seabed, used to control a drifting vessel. Overview Anchors achieve holding power either by hooking into the seabed or via sheer mass, or a combination of the two. Permanent moorings use large masses resting on the seabed. Semi-permanent mooring anchors and large ships anchors derive a significant portion of their holding power from their mass while also hooking or embedding in the bottom. Modern anchors for smaller vessels have metal flukes which hook onto rocks on the bottom or bury themselves in soft seabed. The vessel is attached to the anchor by the road, which is made of chain, cable, rope, or a combination of these. The ratio of the length of road to the water depth is known as the scope. Anchoring with sufficient scope and or heavy chain road brings the direction of strain close to parallel with the seabed. This is particularly important for light, modern anchors designed to bury in the bottom, where scopes of 5 to 7 to 1 are common, whereas heavy anchors and moorings can use a scope of 3 to 1 or less. Since all anchors that embed themselves in the bottom require the strain to be along the seabed, anchors can be broken out of the bottom by shortening the rope until the vessel is directly above the anchor. At this point the anchor chain is up and down. In naval parlance, if necessary, motoring slowly around the location of the anchor also helps dislodge it. Anchors are sometimes fitted with a tripping line attached to the crown, by which they can be unhooked from rocks or coral. The term away describes an anchor when it is hanging on the rope and is not resting on the bottom. This is linked to the term to weigh anchor, meaning to lift the anchor from the seabed, allowing the ship or boat to move. An anchor is described as a way when it has been broken out of the bottom and is being hauled up to be stowed. A way should not be confused with underway, which describes a vessel which is not moored to a dock or anchored. Whether or not the vessel is moving through the water. Evolution of the anchor the earliest anchors were probably rocks, and many rock anchors have been found dating from at least the Bronze Age. Pre-European Maori waka used one or more hollowed stones, tied with flax ropes, as anchors. Many modern moorings still rely on a large rock as the primary element of their design. However, using pure mass to resist the forces of a storm only works well as a permanent mooring. A large enough rock would be nearly impossible to move to a new location. The ancient Greeks used baskets of stones, large sacks filled with sand, and wooden logs filled with lead. According to Apollonius Rhodius and Stephen of Byzantium, anchors were formed of stone, and Athenaeus states that they were also sometimes made of wood. Such anchors held the vessel merely by their weight and by their friction along the bottom. Iron was afterwards introduced for the construction of anchors, and an improvement was made by forming them with teeth, or flukes, to fasten themselves into the bottom. Admiralty pattern The Admiralty pattern, AP, or simply, Admiralty, and also known as, Fisherman, is the anchor shape most familiar to non-sailors. It consists of a central shank with a ring or shackle for attaching the road. At the other end of the shank there are two arms, carrying the flukes, while the stock is mounted to the other end, at 90 degrees to the arms. When the anchor lands on the bottom, it will generally fall over with the arms parallel to the seabed. As a strain comes onto the road, the stock will dig into the bottom, canting the anchor until one of the flukes catches and digs into the bottom. This basic design remained unchanged for centuries, with the most significant changes being to the overall proportions, and a move from stocks made of wood to iron stocks in the late 1830s and early 1840s. 
Since one fluke always protrudes up from the set anchor, there is a great tendency of the road to foul the anchor as the vessel swings due to wind or current shifts. When this happens, the anchor may be pulled out of the bottom, and in some cases may need to be hauled up to be reset. In the mid-19th century, numerous modifications were attempted to alleviate these problems, as well as improve holding power, including one-armed mooring anchors. The most successful of these patent anchors, the Trotman anchor, introduced a pivot where the arms join the shank, allowing the idle arm to fold against the shank. Handling and storage of these anchors requires special equipment and procedures. Once the anchor is hauled up to the hawse pipe, the ring end is hoisted up to the end of a timber projecting from the bone known as the cat head. The crown of the anchor is then hauled up with a heavy tackle until one fluke can be hooked over the rail. This is known as catting and fishing the anchor. Before dropping the anchor, the fishing process is reversed, and the anchor is dropped from the end of the cat head. Stockless Anchor The Stockless Anchor, patented in England in 1821, represented the first significant departure in anchor design in centuries. Though their holding power to weight ratio is significantly lower than Admiralty Pattern Anchors, their ease of handling and stowage aboard large ships led to almost universal adoption. In contrast to the elaborate stowage procedures for earlier anchors, stockless anchors are simply hauled up until they rust with the shank inside the hawse pipes and the flukes against the hull. While there are numerous variations, stockless anchors consist of a set of heavy flukes connected by a pivot or ball and socket joint to a shank. Cast into the crown of the anchor is a set of tripping palms projections that drag on the bottom, forcing the main flukes to dig in. Small boat anchors Until the mid-20th century, anchors for smaller vessels were either scaled-down versions of admiralty anchors, or simple grapnels. As new designs with greater holding power to weight ratios, a great variety of anchor designs has emerged. Many of these designs are still under patent, and other types are best known by their original trademarked names. Grapnel Anchor A traditional design, the grapnel is merely a shank with four or more tines. It has a benefit in that, no matter how it reaches the bottom, one or more tines will be aimed to set. In coral, or rock, it is often able to set quickly by hooking into the structure, but may be more difficult to retrieve. A grapnel is often quite light, and may have additional uses as a tool to recover gear lost overboard. Its weight also makes it relatively easy to move and carry. However its shape is generally not very compact and it may be awkward to stow unless a collapsing model is used. Grapnels rarely have enough fluke carrier to develop much hold in sand, clay, or mud. It is not unknown for the anchor to foul on its own road, or to foul the tines with refuse from the bottom, preventing it from digging in. On the other hand, it is quite possible for this anchor to find such a good hook that, without a trip line from the crown, it is impossible to retrieve. Herreshoff Anchor Designed by Famous Yacht Designer L. Francis Herreshoff This is essentially the same pattern as an admiralty anchor, albeit with small diamond-shaped flukes or palms. The novelty of the design lay in the means by which it could be broken down into three pieces for stowage. In use, it still presents all the issues of the Admiralty Pattern Anchor. North Hill Anchor originally designed as a lightweight anchor for seaplanes. This design consists of two plow-like blades mounted to a shank, with a folding stock crossing through the crown of the anchor. CQR Plow Anchor so named due to its resemblance to a traditional agricultural plow, many manufacturers produce a plow-style design, all based on or direct copies of the original CQR, a 1933 design patented in the UK by mathematician Geoffrey Ingram Taylor. Plows are popular with cruising, sailors and other private boaters. They are generally good in all bottoms, but not exceptional in any. The CQR design has a hinged shank, allowing the anchor to turn with direction changes rather than breaking out, while other plow types have a rigid shank. 
Plow anchors are usually stowed in a roller at the bow. Owing to the use of lead or other dedicated tip weight, the plow is heavier than average for the amount of resistance developed, and may take more careful technique and a longer period to set thoroughly. It cannot be stored in a horse pipe. Delta Anchor The Delta was developed in the 1980s for commercialization by British marine manufacturer Simpson Lawrence. Danforth Anchor American Richard Danforth invented the Danforth pattern in the 1940s for use aboard landing craft. It uses a stock at the crown to which two large flat triangular flukes are attached. The stock is hinged so the flukes can orient toward the bottom. Tripping palms at the crown act to tip the flukes into the seabed. The design is a burying variety, and once well set can develop higher resistance. Its lightweight and compact flat design make it easy to retrieve and relatively easy to store. Some anchor rollers and hawse pipes can accommodate a fluke-style anchor. Of Danforth will not usually penetrate or hold in gravel or weeds. In boulders and coral it may hold by acting as a hook. If there is much current, or if the vessel is moving while dropping the anchor, it may kite or skate over the bottom due to the large fluke carrier acting as a sail or wing. Once set, the anchor tends to break out and reset when the direction of force changes dramatically, such as with the changing tide, and on some occasions it might not reset but instead drag. The FOB HP anchor, designed by Guy Royer in Brittany in the 1970s, is a Danforth variant designed to give increased holding through its use of rounded flukes setting at a 30 degrees angle. The Fortress is an aluminum alloy Danforth variant which was designed by American Don Halleberg. This anchor can be disassembled for storage and it features an adjustable 32 degrees and 45 degrees shank fluke angle to improve holding capability in common sea bottoms such as hard sand and soft mud. This anchor performed well in a 1989 U.S. Naval Sea Systems Command test and in an August 2014 holding power test that was conducted in the soft mud bottoms of the Chesapeake Bay. Bruce or Claw Anchor This claw-shaped anchor was designed by Peter Bruce from the Isle of Man in the 1970s. Bruce gained his early reputation from the production of large-scale commercial anchors for ships and fixed installations such as oil rigs. The Bruce and its copies, known generically as claws, have become a popular option for small boaters. It was intended to address some of the problems of the only general-purpose option then available, the plow. Claw types set quickly in most seabeds and although not an articulated design, they have the reputation of not breaking out with tide or wind changes, instead slowly turning in the bottom to align with the force. Claw types have difficulty penetrating weedy bottoms and grass. They offer a fairly low holding power to weight ratio and generally have to be oversized to compete with newer types. On the other hand, they have a good reputation in boulder bottoms, perform relatively well with low road scopes and set fairly reliably. They cannot be used with horse pipes. Recent designs In recent years there has been something of a spurt in anchor design. Primarily designed to set very quickly, then generate high holding power. These anchors are finding homes with users of small to medium-sized vessels. The German-designed bow anchor, bugle anchor, has a sharp tip for penetrating weed, and features a roll bar which allows the correct setting attitude to be achieved without the need for extra weight to be inserted into the tip. The Bullwagger is a unique design featuring three flukes instead of the usual two. It has performed well in tests by independent sources such as American boating magazine Practical Sailor. The Spade is a French design which has proved successful since 1996. It features a demountable shank and the choice of galvanized steel, stainless steel, or aluminium construction, which means a lighter and more easily stowable anchor. The New Zealand-designed Rockner has been produced since 2004. It too features a sharp toe like the bugle for penetrating weed and grass, sets quickly, and has a large fluke area. Its roll bar is also similar to that of the bugle. Other temporary anchors mud weight. 
consists of a blunt heavyweight, usually cast iron or cast lead, that will sink into the mud and resist lateral movement. Suitable only for very soft silt bottoms and in mild conditions. Sizes range between 5 and 20 kilograms for small craft. Various designs exist and many are home produced from lead or improvised with heavy objects. This is a very commonly used method on the Norfolk Broads in England. Permanent anchors. These are used where the vessel is permanently or semi-permanently sighted, for example in the case of light vessels or channel marker buoys. The anchor needs to hold the vessel in all weathers, including the most severe storm, but needs to be lifted only occasionally. At most, for example, only if the vessel is to be towed into port for maintenance. An alternative to using an anchor under these circumstances, especially if the anchor need never be lifted at all, may be to use a pile driven into the seabed. Permanent anchors come in a wide range of types and have no standard form. A slab of rock with an iron staple in it to attach a chain to would serve the purpose, as would any dense object of appropriate weight. Modern moorings may be anchored by sand screws, which look and act very much like oversized screws drilled into the seabed, or by barbed metal beams pounded in like pilings, or by a variety of other non-mass means of getting a grip on the bottom. One method of building a mooring is to use three or more conventional anchors laid out with short lengths of chain attached to a swivel. So no matter which direction the vessel moves, one or more anchors will be aligned to resist Resist the force. Mushroom anchor. The mushroom anchor is suitable where the seabed is composed of silt or fine sand. It was invented by Robert Stevenson for use by an 82-ton converted fishing boat, Ferros, which was used as a light vessel between 1807 and 1810 near to Bell Rock whilst the lighthouse was being constructed. It was equipped with a 1.5-ton example. It is shaped like an inverted mushroom, the head becoming buried in the silt. A counterweight is often provided at the other end of the shank to lay it down before it becomes buried. A mushroom anchor will normally sink in the silt to the point where it has displaced its own weight in bottom material, thus greatly increasing its holding power. These anchors are only suitable for a silt or mud bottom, since they rely upon suction and cohesion of the bottom material, which rocky or coarse sand bottoms lack. The holding power of this anchor is at best about twice its weight until it becomes buried, when it can be as much as 10 times its weight. They are available in sizes from about 10 pounds up to several tons. Deadweight anchor This is an anchor which relies solely on being a heavyweight. It is usually just a large block of concrete or stone at the end of the chain. Its holding power is defined by its weight underwater regardless of the type of seabed, although suction can increase this if it becomes buried. Consequently, dead weight anchors are used where mushroom anchors are unsuitable, for example in rock, gravel or coarse sand. An advantage of a dead weight anchor over a mushroom is that if it does become dragged, then it continues to provide its original holding force. The disadvantage of using dead weight anchors in conditions where a mushroom anchor could be used is that it needs to be around 10 times the weight of the equivalent mushroom anchor. Screw anchor Screw anchors can be used to anchor permanent moorings, floating docks, fish farms, etc. These anchors must be screwed into the seabed with the use of a tool, so require access to the bottom, either at low tide or by use of a diver. Hence they can be difficult to install in deep water without special equipment. Weight for weight, screw anchors have a higher holding than other permanent designs, and so can be cheap and relatively easily installed, although may not be ideal in extremely soft mud. High holding power anchors There is a need in the oil and gas industry to resist large anchoring forces when laying pipelines and for drilling vessels. These anchors are installed and removed using a support tug and pennant, pendant wire. Some examples are the Steven range supplied by Bridger half anchors. Large plate anchors such as the Stev Mangta are used for permanent moorings.